This world is a peaceful one. Plains, mountains, swamps, pines, cicadas sing, rivers flow, magic thrums through the air, and all of it's surrounded by a single massive wall, as ancient as history itself. So, you know, not that ancient. Thanks to the loss, prehistoric ain't all that long ago. Oh well, life is good, and assuming you don't mind the looming threat of a mysterious skeletal society. Side character quest. A D&D adventure, one player at a time. Some worlds need a hero. This one? Eh, might need a bit more than that. Welcome to the DM's Book Club, a weekly book club podcast where we talk about some Dungeons and Dragons and discuss how we might include them in our role playing campaigns. With me back again for the second time on DM's uh, Book Club, ah, is Ty. <laughs> Hello, Ty. How are you? Hello, Fiona. I'm doing pretty good. How are you doing? I'm doing all right. Well, it's been a long time since you've been here on this podcast because mm-hmm. Ty is uh, our, one of our friends of the show from Side Character Quest. And last time yes. was uh, at time of recording, over two years ago, you came on and talked about like a uh, duet D&D one-on-one yeah. D&D. So yeah, how have you been since I last spoke to you? Obviously on this podcast, we've spoken in between that time, but like, how, yeah. Long, yeah, how have you been so far? Yeah, so I am a, a frequent uh, appearer on the um, uh, How Not to DM and what am I rolling uh, Discord server. Mm-hmm. So you will hear from me every once in a while on there. But yeah, I, I have been doing great. Um, if life has been incredibly busy and yeah. hectic yeah. and my appearance on actual play stuff has been a little bit light over the last couple of years Mm -hmm. but that's because of multiple like multiple moves yeah various life events that i won't get into now because they're amazing great but also uh, not the topic at hand. No, no, not at all. But well, we, well, you can see Ty, hopefully the uh, VOD will be out, but uh, Ty was very kind to appear on a uh, the Roll for yes. Good Solemn Veil vale, uh, sh- one-shot, which we did. That was the first time we actually played together. Oh, I ran, like, I ran I a game for you. And that was quite exciting because I hadn't, I hadn't seen you do uh, actual play, like a live actual play uh, before. Uh-huh. So it was, and it was, obviously, I'll say this now, obviously, and I say, I would say to you, not when we're not recording, <laughs> but it was a joy to have you on there, obviously. Thank you. From what I understand from um, Side Character Quest, obviously, I know it's your usually the one in control and then suddenly oh no lots of other things are happening around you so yeah (laughs) it's really exciting and great to get to break out of that um that experience of being the the gm i Mm. actually over the last uh, the last couple of years, while I haven't been able to do a lot of um, SEQ, hmm. I have gotten to do a couple of home campaigns uh, that I, I've played in a a D and D campaign um, and a Blades in the Dark campaign. Yeah, and in both of those cases, I got to be the player for oh. an extended period of time, and it, it's so it. I feel like it has given me a lot of uh, fresh energy. Yes, to return to GMing and. When I have I ran a uh, a, a forged in the dark uh, one shot for my family for Christmas, I oh, wow. have run a couple of other like one shots here and there just just for home games. And I've been excited for that. And I've been yeah. excited to return to making stuff for SEQ mm. thanks to my time getting to uh, be a player in a non-published space <laughs> i think people don't realize how important that is like again both you and i are content creators and obviously we're both mm-hmm. like versed in tabletop rpgs i know like uh you've been looking into like uh, designing your own sort of system for your podcast yeah. and stuff and i don't think people realize that research she says in quotation marks that takes <laughs> the form of you know reading watching like media stuff like that, but also yeah. playing in games and being immersed in games that aren't you aren't necessarily the one the creative director or anything like that and so i do feel like whilst i'm very happy with the badge forever dm and gm mm-hmm. i love when people go oh would you like to be a player oh fiona, fiona always likes to run the games i'm like no i'm happy to play because then i can learn from a different style and different yeah because because everyone runs D D so differently which is an absolute joy uh, and mm-hmm. i love being able to go oh that's really interesting and then being able to test some of the things that we've talked about on this podcast about like oh what kind of like character i would like to play you know does it if, do i want mm-hmm. to have it completely uh, try a do you want to try these things out because i get very excited and then they go well, where am i going to yeah. use this energy 
I don't know. I guess I'm going to have to make an NPC <laughs> or something, you know? Yeah, I have a uh, a friend who, the, the GM of one of the games that I have been in the last year, who mentioned to me, like, man, I really need to be a player in some stuff. And I was like, oh, why? Are you, do you not like jamming? And he's like, no, I, I love jamming. I just don't understand what you guys get out of playing. Like, <laughs> he was like, like, I can't conceive of why you guys would find what I make for you fun. Interesting. And he really wanted to get a chance to play just so he could figure that out. That's so interesting. Yeah, I, I do think that sometimes where I, I again, and don't know about yourself, sometimes when I've run games at the end of it, obviously you feel mentally exhausted because you've you know, played various people, you've you know run combat, etc. And you're like, oh man, I hope, you know, I hope they enjoy it. And they'll be like, yeah, we love that weird side character you came up with. And you're like, okay, that was just, I was just a mental fart that is now part of the, the thing. And I just was yes anding and stuff like that. But it's, it's very interesting. I think like you said, like, how did you enjoy that session? All of these things went wrong. And they're like, yes, we love that you know <laughs> are you excited to talk about the starter set always always yes today's topic is uh the dragons of storm wreck isle the latest starter set that is used for the current edition of DD. whether or not they'll mm -hmm. do another one in maybe a year and a half's time is up to it but this is effectively replaces the lost minds of Fandelva starter mm -hmm. set that first came out with the uh fifth edition D, &D. and yeah i i sort of propose this to you as a sort of a something quick and easy to read uh -huh. but also I, i'm a big fan of like looking at quick starts I, you know i've, I've run some mm -hmm. some streams about like too long didn't read and like getting into the nitty grits about like, what makes people excited to play a game and i find starter sets are an interesting way of packaging up a, a system and then giving it out to people to go oh okay i could just run the system without having to read 400 pages of novel or, or setting or anything like that so i was like let's i actually didn't know anything about this uh, so I, said, so I was like, I know what I'll do. I'll enforce it on my good friend Ty <laughs> and see what he makes of it. It's funny because the last game that we we did, uh, First Blush, mm. which was the, the two-player game that we did, I read that as a two-player game adventure. Yeah. That's what I thought it was supposed to be. And I ended up leaving it thinking, wow, this would be a great tutorial game for somebody to learn how to play D and D, I thought exactly. it was maybe it was intentional, but it <laughs> but it was accidentally a great starter set. I was actually curious. So, mm -hmm. what did you read in preparation for this? Because for me, mm -hmm. I read the adventure bit, and then I listened to the episode you did on the first starter set oh, um, a few years back. That's all I read. I didn't read any hey, of those. No, no, me, me too. No panic, no okay. panic. Because, okay. uh, yeah, because I, I, what I will say is that there's a couple of booklets in here, uh, and one of them is just a very basic, like, here's how to play the rules, and it's the exact same text they've used every time. It's basically placeholder. Ah, okay. And it's fine. Like, it, it just basically encourages the, the GM to, like, you know, improvise DCs on the fly. Like, you don't need to, you know, it's a, an encouraging manual of about, like, three or four pages of like the basics that you need to know and then yeah, there's some pre-generated characters as well but other than that yeah i just read the the adventure itself and one thing i would say because uh, we haven't covered it on dm's book club but in between the that first starter set and then this one there's the essentials kit oh it's like some sort of expanded starter set where you have like the first adventure and then like four more on top of it so it's almost like a mini really? campaign mm -hmm, yeah is it all all like building straight off of fandelver no it's all different so that one the oh. uh dragons of ice Spire Peak, I believe it's called. They're all oh, to do with dragons. Okay. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. Th that's the essential skill. I think what I realize now, which might, might seem very silly, that the first starter kit had nothing really to do with dragons. And then everyone after this has had yes. something to do with dragons to be like, we need dragons because it's in the title. We need to put yes. the iconic creature in, you know? <laughs> I have a question for you as well. I mm. thought about this before we before I started reading. Mm -hmm. I, I thought like dragons of Stormwreck Isle, what would I want to see out of this mm. just in, in terms of like set pieces, like adventure set pieces? What would I think like, oh, this fun fantasy adventure definitely needs a, B, and C. That's a very good question because yeah, with with a title like that, yeah, Dragons yeah. of Stormwreck, I'll be like, oh. So in my head, and I will admit from the the cover image as well, I assumed it was going to be like a Jurassic Park style, like two 
blue dragons <laughs> fighting each other and yeah. you were stuck in it and you couldn't get out. That's what I assumed it was going to be. Oh, that's really good. And also, again, maybe this was very silly, but I assumed you'd be high level because I was like, these dragons look really big. Uh, maybe you're going to have to be like level seven or eight to fight like a, a young dragon or something like that. That's mm-hmm, what that's mm-hmm. the impression I got because you've got two sort of dragons facing off each other on the cover. Uh, that's not what you get at all. <laughs> no, not at all. Uh, very much not that. Yeah, mm. I, you know, to answer my own question on this, mm, yeah. I would want to see a few things out of it. I would want to see like you said, a, a dragon battle. Yeah. I would want to see actual dragons. I would want to have the chance to potentially befriend a dragon. Yeah. And uh, on the terms of Stormwreck, I would want there to be a raging storm around this island. Mm. And then the wreck part, I would want there to be ships. Yeah. And if there's going to be ships on an island, I want there to be pirates. Yes. Like that's that's what I want out of this. I think as well, the, the idea of storm wreck as well is that, yeah, there mm-hmm. is a storm that you get wrecked on the island yes. and then you can't escape from it. Again, not what happens. Minus spoilers. No, we'll, we'll... <laughs> that is surprising. That didn't occur to me, but you're right. Yeah, we yeah. don't wreck. We land... <laughs> Quite calmly. You have to go to this place. What I will say before we continue is that obviously we will be spoiling this starter yes. set. So if you're like, I can't wait to play it, maybe don't listen to this episode till after because we're, all we're going to mm-hmm, do is do mm-hmm. a bit of a critique about it uh, and give away some of the spoilers. This whole, uh, the adventure itself is only about four chapters plus like a, a bestiary and some appendix as well in terms mm-hmm. of magic items and whatnot. Uh, so it's relatively, it is quite a short starter set. I think you could get through it in maybe two, maybe three sessions if you were just like gunning through everything yeah. if you wanted to do a bit more role play or anything like that then maybe it would take a little bit longer maybe so up to six sessions which i think is roughly the the length of a starter set is that to get enough mm-hmm. out of a, a of a story i feel like it was a good a good starter set length uh short enough that like you said depending on how you get through it you would still have the energy and desire mm. to move on to something else mm-hmm Compared to, say, Fandelva, which I appreciate does have now this very privileged thing of being fleshed out into an actual setting, because in that particular mm-hmm. starter set, there was a lot going on. Like, there was loads of locations that were dotted around in the area, like, you know, and you could miss some of them. Here you are on an island, the Stormwreck Island, as it sort of is in the title. Uh, you go there via boat. You meet all your friends going to boat, and you all have a reason to go here. And then all the quests are either on the island itself or nearby, mm-hmm. which you can get so it's all very contained which i think is again good for like maybe start starting gm so that they're not like oh yes. no they've, they've they've decided they want to go back to the mainland and they're swimming across you know <laughs> yeah i played fandelver when fifth edition first came out mm. and i remembered it being uh, a very long adventure i haven't gone yes. back to it in years but i remember mm. it being very long i remembered it having a ton of npcs with complicated relationships mm-hmm. and i at the time had a really hard time uh, parsing all of it, putting all those pieces together and getting them locked in my brain well enough to actually run the game, mm. uh, despite, you know, I, I did attempt to, but that was very difficult Oh, so for you me. ran the game then? I would say I ran five or six sessions okay. uh, before it uh, the thing petered out for reasons yeah. I don't recall. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> scheduling the usual <laughs> yeah nothing to do with like a a fault of the campaign or the adventure no, no. i found it enjoyable and fun mm-hmm. it was just difficult for me mm. uh as a relatively inexperienced gm at the time mm-hmm. to um really just get a hold of all of those like pieces in my brain and be able yeah. to use them i've played through it as a player uh-huh. and i think i agree with you because like it's such a when you sit down and you read it all you go oh this is a great first campaign uh-huh. but i feel like it took us because yeah the i remember the gm at the time said like look this is supposed to take us six sessions we're on a year and a half of you yeah doing it because we wanted to explore everything we wanted you know we did chatting we failed various things and the gm obviously improvised and stuff like that so great I, value we loved it yeah we we got yeah. loads out of it but like i guess for the gm that might have it might have felt like oh we're still in the we're still on the starting blocks we're still in the starter set we're not mm-hmm. exploring and now i feel like like this the dragons of stormwreck isle i feel like this is pared down enough to be like very bare bones which people might might find disappointing but i feel like there's enough mm-hmm. that that you can play together get the basic rules down in a couple of sessions and go oh so this is what it's like oh yeah i'll come yeah. back and play again next weekend we'll have new characters yeah you know whereas i think with the foundelva uh set yeah you kind of stuck with those characters for such a long time that you're like well it would feel bad that we finished this adventure we wanted to make new characters you, you've already bonded uh-huh. to them whereas i feel these characters 
certainly uh, the the ones the pre gens for the uh, Stormwreck Isle. It, there was enough to be like, here's a reason why you want to go there, and that's it. You can make anything else up. Everything is customizable from then on. Let's let's get started then and talk about the just I guess the overall uh, structure of the adventure. So as we sort of said, you sort of arrive at this isle, you come and meet sort of the mentor, the sort of the main sort of NPC whose name I've completely forgotten, which is always not very good. Lunara. Luna. Uh, yeah. Uh, Nura. No, sorry, say that again. Ru- Runarna. Runa. Runara. Welcome to With DM's book club. R U N A R A. That is totally from memory. I could be wrong. No, no. Well, here's the thing. Like you, you're probably right in terms of the spelling, but in terms of pronunciation, who knows? Again, my my big <laughs> my big complaint with all Wizards of the Coast books is that there is never a pronunciation guide, and uh-huh. I I'm someone that always uh, bottles out at fancy names, and I'll be like, ah, uh, Steve, ah, uh, Sarah. Yeah. <laughs> I just, you know and i know that's the me thing that's absolutely thing. i should just try it and nobody else will question me but i do think like if they had this like hey this is how you would pronounce it or you know, just a quick guide of everyone's names and location names i think people would be like oh that's how you say it and it doesn't ha- i guess yeah. i don't know we've been looking at some eberron stuff and keith baker has said like in terms of pronunciations whatever you say works and i'm like keith that is not helpful uh, <laughs> <laughs> what i say is completely different to what uh, hamilton says but uh yeah you you meet uh, runara the person who's like the lead leader of the temple there uh who has a very interesting backstory is uh, again massive spoiler it's dragon in disguise and there's and there's history of like this island where there's all this dragon magic and dragons have died here and it's just like this this energy here means a lot and then there's another rival dragon who was against her leadership and they 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 quarreled and now this other dragon's hiding somewhere else on the island mm-hmm. and eventually you the finale is that you face off with this dragon and rescue another dragon so there's three dragons involved in this uh-huh. uh which is more you free dragons for for one starter set it's not too bad i would say not too bad and there's also a, a dragon imprisoned under the volcano mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. so there's a there's a fourth dragon it's fourth dragon and you've got you know, a whole host of characters who have interesting past who have come to the temple mm-hmm. and each of your pre-generated characters has a reason to be there and has an answer the uh, leader of this of this particular temple will give them quests to go on to be like oh you will find your answer here and direct them to two big sort of points either the cursed shipwreck or the sea grow caves which would then lead up to a point where you're like right we've now got all that we need that we need to go to the cliff top observatory to go f- and have this uh showdown with this other dragon what did you make of sort of the general sort of structure as 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 you said as a as a gm coming to this i liked a couple of things about this one is that the chapters two and three the sea grow caves and then the cursed shipwreck mm. both of those felt like they had tons of stuff like yes. they both felt like a plug and play one shot that you could Pop into any D and D campaign Agreed. in the center of it, mm-hmm. and then pop out, and you it would be a satisfying little adventure that you can use at any point. Um, that's even true, kind of, of chapter four. Yes, you could go from chapter one. You could skip straight to chapter four. Basically, you could skip from the intro to the conclusion if you just adjusted the power levels a bit. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You could do all three of, or sorry, all four of the chapters. You could switch around two three and four into whatever order you want yes it's clear the intended way is one two or three yes three or two and then four Mm -hmm. but you could mix and match this so so many different ways which i think is great um you get use out of it even if you are already familiar you know, and you aren't a starter. I think what maybe may, maybe the missing perhaps is having like an actual flow diagram because I know stuff like in City of Mists and stuff like that, you yes. have locations where you'd be like, you can go to these places. I mean, I appreciate there's only two big locations, so it's it's a very simple diagram. Uh-huh. But I agree, I I quite like that you could do them in any order. Then it gave you advice like, oh, if they're already level two, add extra couple of creatures here to beef it up, or they should now be level three. You know, and giving that advice, but it wasn't like conductive to the for them to continue. It wasn't like a big wall saying oh you can't go through here and yes. you know you, there wasn't like the invisible like oh well you've not leveled up so i guess you're gonna have to yeah. kick your heels and talk to the npcs and do some some role play you know can i ask you uh how did you feel about the level up advice where they basically just said you know if if your character is uh you know this is designed for level one characters if they're already level two mm. then it was always just like add 
one extra body yeah <laughs> or think... add two extra bodies to this yeah no i definitely agree i think because for me i'm someone who is, is sucks at combat i suck at combat so much and i'm also bad at uh judging the levels as well because uh-huh. ultimately the player characters when they're created they are always going to be slight they're always going to have an edge you're going to have something extra to this so in my head i would actually just have the extra stuff that says oh the level two add three things i always add them in anyway and then if they yeah. do something cool you just wipe them out yeah exactly i think i appreciated it because again you and i are both uh, experienced gms of this, so maybe it, mm-hmm. the advice we don't need it but i do wish it would say like hey if they do think of a cool thing that's not combat related, because uh, yeah. they just talk about it a little bit, uh, but if you like, like bit near the end, yeah, exactly. It's like they can they can bypass it. I think encouraging that because it makes it more cinematic. It's just and mm-hmm. it makes you feel so cool that you manage to talk your way out of fighting the the creatures that are, are affecting the the myconoids, You know all that sort of thing. Totally, it shows that you are clever. I think as players and enjoying the story. But I know that's not necessarily what D and D is about. D and D unfortunately is a combat system. So when you level yes. up, you're going to get more powerful in terms of weapon attacks rather than yes. social uh, deduction or social persuasion perhaps the one example i felt where adding an extra body mm-hmm. uh an extra baddie um to fight against <laughs> in yeah. the combat made things interesting in a way that was like specifically laid out in the book mm-hmm. was there's a fight against a harpy mm. and they say that if your characters are already level two Then when they fight this harpy, add another harpy. Mm. And the two harpies don't trust each other. And your players could potentially convince them to get mad at each other and distrust one another and Mm. maybe fight each other so you guys don't have to fight them. And that, I thought, was like a great way that like, you know, making the combat more interesting by adding additional combatants Mm. as opposed to making it more of a slog because... I feel that the hardest thing for any new GM, in my opinion, is pacing, Mm -hmm. is making it so that they know when to end a scene, when to continue a scene. And D&D's combat is really, really hard to pace well. Oh, very hard to pace well. And the more individual bad guys you add, Mm -hmm. the harder that becomes. Yeah, absolutely. So the advice of, oh, oh, you're, you know, you're a brand new GM, uh, you need to make this combat more difficult, add more bad guys, that's just going to make the combat more boring. More boring and and more difficult for you if you're already struggling with trying to work out yeah. action economy and, and stuff like that. Exactly. Now, granted, with the, with the exception of, like you said, where, uh, you know, using it some easy to kill enemies to make it a little bit more exciting Mm -hmm. that's that's totally valid and fair but that's not advice it gives no no but i but i think it's true because it's something that in my head i'm i'm very okay to do that now you know i'm very good to be like oh there's a call that's coming and then the npc you rescue goes don't worry i'll stop them and then it's like cool i don't have to worry about that npc fighting and they're just they're just you know plot armor but they're away from the fight that you're currently on so it it lets us you know that that's the thing i think of there um i think Ultimately, yeah, I agree. I love having alternate ways to like end combat and stuff like that and give the players that they are cool and that they don't, like you said, it doesn't become a slog fest. Because again, not only is this for obviously new GMs, but also for new players as well. So if they're looking yeah. at their thing going, oh, what spells do I have? Because I know there's like a cleric yeah. and there's a wizard as well. And so you just start going like, oh, spells and and then you know fighting and, and the rogues there as well. So I wonder, out of interest, because this place does have maps, would you, because you're not a GM that usually uses is uh, maps for your combat do you use more theater of the mind mm-hmm, correct so you're wondering if i would if i would use a ma- uh, these maps these maps particularly for first time players mm, that's a good question mm-hmm. i feel like if it was brand new players i think that if i had a feeling that i had people enraptured mm. then i would hold back on the maps yeah when i'm describing the scene setting all of that mm-hmm. but as soon as people seem confused or if if they don't seem like they're like grabbing like oh i'm i they're not actually seeming that into it Mm -hmm. then i would pull out the maps to be like hey look picture this in your mind clearly my description is not giving you anything to is not helping Mm. um so i would i would redirect to that then my second question on top of that then is because i because i think you're absolutely right would you play this starter set then? If you got the starter set, whether it's digital or physical, 
is your first thought, and I appreciate, you know, you make content that's usually remotely and I, you play mm-hmm. in person. Would you, if you were introducing this to a new player, would you, and you had this starter set, would you prefer to play it in person or online? Oh, definitely in person. Yeah. I find that when, when you have people in person, mm-hmm. um, there is a different energy. There is an ease in getting people to uh, lock in. You can more more specifically control the vibes of the mm-hmm. area, making sure that, you know, the, the lights are turned down, mm-hmm. uh, not oppressively. Uh, <laughs> you've got like a sort of low level ambiance going in the background of of, of music or, or sound effects. So just kind of like just peacefully, it, it's not even necessarily related to what's going on. It's mm-hmm. just kind of setting the mood of, hey, we're having a fun adventure time. Mm-hmm. Pay attention to what's happening here Mm -hmm. and if if people have traveled to your home Mm -hmm. to play this game i I feel like that also helps them walk in a little bit more yeah if i was playing with you know experienced players Mm. uh or if i had no choice you know which happens then then i I would happily run this online and i I think that having those digital maps that it uh Mm. that you can get from this Mm -hmm. um would be really helpful but Otherwise, if I had my choice with yeah. some brand new players, definitely in person. I think I agree. And it's the same reason that you're sort of, uh, sort of into it. I do think starter sets, there's something like I've, I've run loads of different starter scenarios, you know, Alien, uh, I'm looking at some like uh, Call of Cthulhu, all that sort of thing. And I've done them online. But it's something about having the physical starter set where it's just like the physical adventure is in front of you, the map is yes. there. Uh, people have their character. Like it's it's a, it's a board game, right? It's all yeah. in one, and so I do feel there's something tactile about it. So I, I definitely much, very much appreciate. Like I'm looking at all my starter sets over there, going yes. like they will never yes. get played. But I've looked <laughs> through them and gone, this is a really good starter set. So I always do think like starter sets, as long as they're accessible online, that's absolutely fine. But I do think yeah. they encourage people to go and meet in person and play in person. And I think, like you said, we get so much more enjoyment. As you, you know, I, th- I do think like in person and remote gaming has pros and cons, absolutely. But there's something about starter sets where I'm like we need to play this in person because yes. the, like i said the vibes are right you can help with rules straight there and you can, yes you can actively see people engaging like that's the thing as well you're saying you can hand each of the new players a d20 from your collection and say for this for this session this is you <laughs> uh and and just that i feel like having that little physical trinket mm-hmm. to like lock in on your character is such a powerful thing yeah yeah i think the in-person Mm. bit of it can't be ignored i think we're both agreed like there's no right or wrong in terms of which no. one to do at all and certainly when you're beginning but i do think because i know sometimes when you're beginning and you're playing in person that is kind of scary because obviously you're you're acting in yes. quotation marks but i feel like something like this because the, the the adventure is so straightforward so simple you can't get lost and again short booklet so you can look for it quite quickly as well mm-hmm, mm-hmm. compared to that that previous star set which had as you said a whole wealth of stuff where you could get lost easily in it i feel this is i feel would feel more comfortable as a as a new dm for playing it for new people and people getting in on board and excited and and hopefully be willing to come back week after week to finish it off after two or three sessions as well what did you think of the ending (laughs) i found it a little like it's it is it is not much of an ending no. which i think is on purpose <laughs> i agree yeah uh, but but uh yeah it, it ends at, at a very just you know there is this combat with um a brawn with a uh, i'm sorry a blue wormling mm-hmm. and the wormling like does a, a w-y-r-m-l-i-n-g uh, not w-o-r-m um, <laughs> oh. eh. uh, <laughs> the wormling has this like big uh it's trying to perform this big ritual Mm. you defeat it and then i don't think i don't think runara even ever has to reveal that she's a dragon does she that's interesting reveals it early on as she she gains the trust but i don't think you have to ever reveal yeah yeah i don't i think it's like a oh she is this dragon so maybe if there's some questioning or from the players or sort of i agree but i will say like so yeah the spark render is this character's name this Mm -hmm. sort of uh evil blue dragon which is i I love the name of it it's great but i will say the first so when he talks talks about running the chapter and gets to the final sort of boss room spark render is asleep and it tells you you could easily just stealth past it and go yeah. rescue the other dragon and then then it talks about this big ritual so if it happens to wake up i'm like wait wait I, hang on that doesn't seem cool the ritual sounded so 
fun yeah. so much more fun like you read through i read through i was reading this all in order and i read through the whole sorry i'm, I'm jumping ahead of no, you no, no, go but, uh, but i read through the whole description of like here's how you could sneak past it here's how you could do like a one-on-one -on -one fight if you accidentally fail to stealth it here's all this stuff and i was like oh that's you know okay that all makes sense that's that's pretty good and then they described the ritual fight and i'm like that's so much cooler yeah that's 100%. so much cooler and, and i'm like man i i oh boy <laughs> 100% <laughs> I would absolutely just skip those first two bit like sneaking past it to rescue the other dragon yeah. uh, and if you wake it up I, I would get rid of that bit completely and just have the ritual just because it's yeah. cool it's uh, much more like and you could have hints about it happening like oh a dragon keeps appearing like when mm -hmm. you go to the sea grove it's like, oh it's because this dragon came and did something yeah. or something got stolen from the, this wreck of the ship that we went to oh that's because this dragon was there. and like because there's no mm -hmm. real hints about what this dragon is doing until right at the end goes ah oh, big bad is coming and you're like uh, what okay what? i guess we, i guess we'll stop it so it does feel like if you play as is it is a bit of a, a non-ending which i'm a bit like because yeah. your players aren't gonna go in quietly they're, they're heroes you know they want yes. to prove themselves on the note of non-ending though there was something that I, I particularly liked about the setting of the starter set mm. and that is the fact that it is on an island yes on the sword coast so i'm a person who ha generally veers away from pre-written settings mm -hmm. I, I like my homebrew settings i feel like this the fact that this starts on an island mm. means that you could then immediately go into the swords coast the, yeah. like the nearest bit of the sword coast you could go up or down the coast go to, like start your adventure somewhere else maybe because a storm has swept you off your path mm. you've ended up somewhere you didn't expect you could end up in a different you know pre-written island adventure or you could leave this island leave D D setting and go entirely to your new homebrew setting mm. that it's like a different continent so far away and uh i love that this is a starter set that that makes it so easy mm -hmm. to swap this island in the middle of wherever you want it to be. Mm -hmm. Well, it's exactly what you said about like the sea grown coves and the and the shipwreck islands. They are self contained adventures. You don't need to know before and after. You just you know the sea grove coves uh, like decided something's wrong in the under underground bits. Mm -hmm. Something's happening there. Well, we'll go investigate it because the the town is falling sick or the water's been polluted. And you go and there's uh, I think with Mike and it's great. Uh, oh, you your treasure hunters, you're scavenging. There's a, a storm wreck and you hear that there's some harpies nearby and then suddenly uh waterlogged zombies come back it's it, like you said it's yes. very much like you could just pick it and just go plop Blop. put it somewhere as a as a again i think it's such a it's modular yeah very modular right you could be like okay well, we're only going to have one session all right well i will take uh, i'll take the shipwreck and then just use you know here are the characters uh you've been sent on the quest from the stormwreck isle and just do that bit you don't need any of the context from that and i just think that's such a it's a clever thing to do is to get people into it and i agree i feel like the setting itself with a little bit of backstory about like what dragons do i think what the one thing i would do is mm -hmm. let people know at the beginning when i was sort of doing the introductions like what this island was about like but there used to be dragons here and because it doesn't really you don't really know what the isles for or what this history is but i would just say it as just group knowledge of like it's known for fights between the dragons and met metallics and chromatics and then this fight and well, maybe there's less dragons now but there's this the scar of magic and it's been claimed that there are dragons hidden beneath still etc and i think just having that for the players to to play on to know and maybe click go wait there is a dragon even if you never say you know dragons yeah. of storm wreck isle you're like oh roll credits you know that's sort of <laughs> yeah i think that would be a, a great way to like get people excited and scared yes. um and nervous about things oh speaking of scared and mm -hmm. i i know that you're a big fan of like horror gameplay what? and i know you've <laughs> and i know you have mentioned myconids just in passing mm -hmm. several times through this i'm very curious to hear your thoughts of like how you would run that because there's a lot of little bits in that that i thought would catch your attention oh yeah definitely uh so yeah so myconids are these basically mushroom people um if you've played Baldur's gate 3 there's a whole section in, in them just now and i i think they're great because mm. they can they use 
telepathy and their spores to sort of communicate, but also communicate through emotions and stuff like that, and like yes. almost sending images and stuff like that. I love stuff because I'm very much. Yeah. I'm sure you're the same. I'm very much. I'm a big fan of like GM scenes where players aren't involved. Yes. I am going to talk. Uh, let me <laughs> let me do my little bits. Then like encouraging that idea of like you know when people do inside checks, it's not just what they say, it's what they yeah. feel and stuff like that. And I, one thing I thought was really cool about that particular encounter and the this idea of like okay, you meet some myconids, the spores they affect you for as long as you're in the caves maybe so an hour or so afterwards but you can feel what your other party members are feeling yes and encouraging that role play it's like why is uh why is the cleric very sad you know or like yeah. you're getting these emotions just off the top and i just thought that was really cool and again it's something else you twist into as as players getting them excited to to play and go one beyond their character sheets by like asking the other player why are you sad <laughs> like even if it's as as blunt a question as that you know i love the role play opportunities that specifically come from, I think they're called rapport spores, yeah, which, I, which I thought was very funny. But I, I love the the idea of that because I just imagine like a, a team of players collecting some of these spores, realizing that they last an hour and then using them to like give themselves a little psychic advantage mm. in the future. They're mm-hmm. like, oh, let's let's bust out these spores so that we can psychically talk to one another. Yes. Anyone infected is able to speak with anyone else affected mm-hmm. for an hour mm-hmm. so like you could use that in such interesting ways mm-hmm. as players i would oh i would love to to yeah. oh it was so good yeah rapport sports and this idea of just stress spores as well oh yeah 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 Yeah, i think ultimately if i was running this particular one i would make it ambiguous because i my kids are supposed to be scary like they're, uh-huh. they're, they're you know they're human size mushroom like fungi they have little heart mushrooms yeah the human heart mushrooms yeah. gross <laughs> <laughs> love it like you could you, you could go with proper into the detail and stuff and these things moving slowly but also, is it up to the players to be like, you know, because like, you, you could easily make it into a, a big combat and you're like, we, you know, mm. it, like it does say like, you know, if they do, um, you know, kill off some microbes and that's okay. The, the person who sent you on the mission is sad, but like, yes. it's like understands like you had to do it because they'd lost their senses because of this, this uh, venting uh, sort of smoke that was happening uh, below the aisle. Again, if it was me being a cruel person who loves horror, I would definitely make it uh ambiguous as whether or not they had been very much influenced by this thing and if they turn you know evil in quotation marks or they just lose their senses and then if the players can work out what's going on but again maybe not so much for like beginner players who might be like oh morality no i didn't mean to be a bad person but i know it's a a slippery slope as soon as someone goes wait we'll just kill them great and then they're like ah money ah great you know so i think there's a it depends on what you want to get out of the game right if you want to encourage people to be like hey storytelling is really cool and like we can really build up cool collaborative like uh tales together or we're gonna video game this you know we're gonna do xyz and and use milestone leveling and uh, xp leveling sorry on the note of combat options versus story options Mm -hmm. so i took notes as i was reading through this I just had the thought of like, there, there's a, a quote where it says, in the meantime, she finds comfort in helping humans and other people escape from cycles of violence. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It was about Runara, the dragon. Yes. And I had a note under that that said, there better be ways to avoid combat. Mm. And I paid attention to that as I went along. Every section that I can think of mm. explicitly mentions a non-combat solution mm-hmm. with the exception I think of like the zombies returning yes. so the first time you see them you have to like you can potentially just leave them run away the yeah. second <laughs> time you see them it assumes that you're going to fight them mm-hmm. now obviously mm-hmm. players a clever player and a clever GM can come up with other options but I appreciate that over and over again in this book it will say like you can stealth your way Mm -hmm. you can swim you can get these two people to argue rather than you having to fight them you can you know make some sort of good relation with the myconids i i guess there's the little the little snaky thing at the end of the myconid thing which Mm. you would have to fight yeah but but generally like all of the sentient creatures Mm. you have a non-combat option yeah which i like question back to you then with with your Mm -hmm. podcast obviously i know it's usually one versus one like I assume you have conflict, obviously, and, yes. and and fighting and stuff like that. 
how often do would you say your players in the world you create? I appreciate it's very different to this. Yeah. Go for the combat option, or is it? Are they playing? Are they playing smart? Go, but I am only one person, so I better talk my yeah. way out of it. You know what I mean? I feel like the the thought of like, well, I'm only one person, has only come up a couple of times because mm. generally people do end up befriending a uh, npc without yes. me needing to like insert one no. specifically for them mm-hmm. they they end up finding somebody that they're like i like this person i it makes sense for them to come with me right now mm-hmm. and then when the combat comes around they can do that mm-hmm. i would say in 100 episodes i think that there are only boy i did the math at one point there's <laughs> not a lot of there's not a lot of episodes that actually have combat like all and out brawls or anything like all that. and out brawls like yeah. and, and generally the way i play it the way i i always recommend playing any combat is that like very few people are going to fight to the death yes right that's another thing that happens in this that uh mm-hmm. the spark render they make a point that when he gets down to like 10 percent of his health or whatever yeah. he will flee get out of there but yeah. then they they say later no at this point if you fight him at this point he is too invested and mm. he will fight to the death and i mm. liked them making that point because the, if if you say one person is willing to fight to the death that does imply most other sentience won't mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. in most of the games that you've run it sounds like uh most people go for not even not the passive option but will look for alternate non-combat options yeah. the point i was going to make on that was that i think it's very interesting in the last couple of years i, I know there's been this big drive because of stuff like critical role and other mm-hmm. streaming platforms where people are they're not fussed about the big combats like they're exciting yeah. cinematic pieces but they're not it's not every session like uh, dimension mm-hmm. 20 is great for it like the early seasons like it's always like the first episode is social and then oh one combat episode a social yeah. episode a combat episode and so it breaks it up like that so it's easy streaming and i think more mm-hmm. people now are like interested in in games which are more storytelling and getting over yeah. that fear of like oh i'm not an actor or i'm not a, an improviser it is just enjoying it and not having to worry about like i've rolled a d12 instead of a d20 you know what i mean yes. so i think yes. I, it's interesting you say that there is non-combat options it's not as i don't think they advertise it at all uh, that there are non-combat options compared to say uh, Wild Beyond the Witchlight was one of the sort of the Feywild one that came out of the carnival and they made a big thing about like oh you don't have to fight anything in this in this particular uh-huh. adventure what I discovered when, when I read it with my friend Emily is that Emily pointed out it's like, well you don't have to fight anything but you get pushed over quite a bit <laughs> the, yeah. the hags win etc so you do have to stand up and fight at certain points so I think this mm-hmm. is interesting that like you said there's lots of different options that make it easy for the GM and for players to be like, well, hang on, I don't want to, f- I, I don't, I don't see a way forward. You know, well, you can always run, you can always use, and yeah. I think it just encourages the GM to explore those options. Whereas in the past, maybe they were like, well, we, this is a fighting game, but we yeah. have, you have to, like again with Fandel, but lots of there's, you know, the big dungeon at the end, you you go and I have to kill the BBG, like because they're they're about yeah. to bring the whole of Fandelva down, you know. In a lot of D and D stuff that I have read that I remember reading mm. years ago because I haven't read many adventures recently. Sure, uh, I mostly listen to people talking about the adventures. What? <laughs> um, uh, but it felt like I was listening to a or I was reading a adventure for a combat game. Mm-hmm. This felt like reading an adventure for a combat game that knows that some people are going to play it out another way. Yeah, it is definitely not catering to people that no. don't like combat mm-hmm. it is catering to people that want combat mm-hmm. but it's acknowledging that yeah. you could do something else yeah and you won't be disadvantaged if you don't like it's not like you're doing mm-hmm. the um killed all these creatures okay so for each creature that's uh you know that's 500 xp it's not doing that it's like once you've finished this this bit of the mission yeah everyone gets 500 xp depending on it doesn't matter yeah as long as everyone does it together that's fine it doesn't matter how mm-hmm. you got there is there a bit of the, this particular starter set you're like, I really, really love this? And there's a bit of the adventure or the starter set you're like, no, nah, sod this, not at all. Boy, I, I had um I had a one thing that was ready to go, go as like a thing that I liked, mm-hmm. which was the um the Myconid rapport spores. Yes. We've already done that. So let me go That's to the okay. one that I, I didn't particularly like yeah, care sure. for. I remember reading the section on npcs Mm. and it has runara who looks human but it's a dragon Mm -hmm. then it has unless i'm mistaken like three or four 
named NPCs with really fleshed out backstories that can mm-hmm. give you quests and whatever. They're all human as well. Mm-hmm. And then they're the rest of the town and the rest of the named NPCs besides the the dragon that you fight at the end. They are all kobolds. Yes. And they don't have quests for you. I know. They don't have fleshed out backstories. They they do have some good ones and some bad ones. So it's mm. not all like they're all cad- cannon fodder. There is mm-hmm. a little bit of like complexity. But it just, it bummed me out that I was just like, oh, you, you want kobolds? You want a bunch of kobolds? We're not going to give you a single one <laughs> with a fleshed out backstory. Yes. Like, it, it'd be fine if there were no character no npcs with uh with flesh out backstories but there's a bunch and they're all mm. human yes uh, tarak and varnoth yeah the two uh, yeah i said really interesting like they oh the, we've got a hidden past we won't talk about it but they are both human and when you consider that you know we've got a dwarven fighter and half elf and so we've mm-hmm. got the diversity of lineage in the characters the players yeah the players. it'd be cool yeah. to have yeah more because cobalt's are fun i love having cobalt's uh-huh. there's seven of them uh, and i'm like are there supposed to be like i don't know seven dwarves or play on that and it, it does say that you don't need to bring them all to life but i'm like oh is that really what it is there are the seven dwarves oh, i missed that no no sorry there's nine of them i've just i've just realized oh, okay. i was counting them quickly they've got enough like quirks to bring them alive but you're right they don't other than like i'm here i'm a bit silly that's yeah. kind of it and i kind of wish again cobalts get i think they get a bit of a bad rep because of the sort of history about like they're always in uh service to dragons they're always a bit cowardly etc mm. but i feel like you could play these really useful in that yeah, could be like one of them got lost in the cove you have to go find them and they because they went to go and save the town and they knew something was wrong with the myconids and stuff like so yeah i think giving them a bit more to do rather than just be like we're silly we're gonna be silly and you have yeah. silly encounter with us and that's it yeah but give them a bit more of a, round, a rounded character for sure so so as far as the you had asked uh what's like something that i, I particularly liked mm. from this adventure i am very very glad that they had shipwrecks that they actually yeah. did do that 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 actually happened and i love that the the maps that they provide for that and they explicitly say this if you ever need a shipwreck in any of your campaigns just throw this map in there and like change what's what's on it change what's yeah. around it i think that's great I think that the uh, flavor of it, Mm -hmm. it it was exactly just, this is a shipwreck. This is what it is. I mean, maybe that's a low bar. I don't know. But but I I thought it did that very well. And Mm -hmm. um, that was all that I wanted from that. I kind of wish there was more kind of shipwrecks that you could explore. Like, you know, not like yes. five or six, but like one or two uh, that you'd find, I don't know, clues or some more magic items and stuff like that. Yeah, I agree. I think if it's in the title of the adventure, you got to see, you know, dragons, oh, the storm and a wreck, you know? <laughs> now that you say that, I my mind immediately goes, why wasn't there another... Why yeah. isn't there at least one example of another ship? They they give you the one that's related to the plot, mm-hmm. and they say if your people explore others, there won't be anything like related to the plot. But like, here's some you know you you can just yeah. reuse this map and plop whatever you want on there, which does yeah. Now that you say it again, it might it just might be like again if you're just doing like a one contained session, it might be fine. But if they're like, yeah. oh, that was really fun. But if there must be more wrecks around here, and then you know, then you're like. Oh god! So yeah. what would, one thing I do love about Wizards of the Coast in some of their books, they do these random tables. I think a random table of two of like, here's the name of a, a ship that's been wrecked. Uh, here's the treasure that's on it, and yeah. a mystery that you could find. Uh, there's a a siren on it. Yeah, you know, or a ghost of the captain who knows more about the the isle itself, etc., and, and has unfinished business. Oh, that'd be a great way to give more lore about this. This that's great. Mm. Yeah. Of course, of course. It doesn't have to be too much. And I guess it's tricky because I just feel anything that's on to dot, when you have to do on the sea, like they had like Salt Marsh was a book that came out. This, this uh-huh. And I really like that idea of like, you know, pirates and stuff like that, because it's just something different. You always have new locations and obviously politics. And so it's, it, you're right before, like you have this island in the middle of it and then you could just expand out to like the seas and just yeah. go from there and have your own like sort of Sea of Thieves thing. I'll tell you what my, my favourite bit about this campaign i quite like the uh additional encounters i don't know if i saw this it's right at the beginning uh in chapter one and it's right at the end like there's like cloister quests individual quests and then exploring the island and this is where the additional quests are so there's four of them so yeah so you have one about kobolds you've got one about you you mentioned the dragon that's under the island one of them is just hot springs havoc 
where there's a oh, hot spring. Oh, I've, I did see this. Okay. Yeah. And it's just this idea of like, you know, a, you know, a nice little springs, you get temporary hit points, but it, it connects to that whole thing about this hot springs is actually, it's a place where a, a brass dragon died and that's where mm-hmm. the magic comes from. And I think I would love to see more mini locations that you could explore on the island mm-hmm. that could, could be random encounters, etc., which then were connected with the magic of the dragons that were here. Because like, I just like that idea of like, yeah, the, the fire, the magic of this thing uh, made this uh, hot springs and then you're sort of warm by it. There's an owl bear encounter. There always has to be an owl yes. bear somewhere, you know? I was thinking that when, when I was listening to the episode with the other starter set and you yes. guys mentioned owl bear, I was like, oh, they, they, they really, oh, I did not realize exactly how much of a... Uh, of a mascot the owl bear is but of course yeah, yeah again this is a particular owl bear again i quite like it because it's not as passive as i think as the last mm-hmm. one was this idea of like it's it's aggressive it's territorial but it has like a, a whistle around its neck so if oh. you manage to get it's your pet as a result um and yeah i just again the many 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 little encounters which i think could be really evocative and you can remember that uh, adventure as, uh, as a result it says in the uh the description owl bear was originally part of uh, was stranded here after a performing troop. Yes. Got stranded. That's a ship, right? Mm, yeah. I, you go to a ship with a bunch of like stuff from a circus or whatever. You fight the zombie of a clown. <gasps> oh uh, like, my God. There's the horror there. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no thank you oh, but yeah I, I, yeah you can build so much on this so i think one thing i definitely take away from the star set is that i think it's a good one accessible sure i think more accessible than the previous star set is it as exciting is it as different i, mm. I think it's fine I, would i run it for example i don't think yeah. i would without a lot of changes to make it more interesting like like i said that that get that ritual at the top that's the exciting mm-hmm. thing leave more clues like that it's i think it's a good one if you are brand new to D and you're you're trying to get like you said you were saying before that you ran a one shot for your family at christmas if you just is a holiday you get thanksgiving yeah. you know uh, fourth of july whatever you sit people down and go okay we're all here let's do uh half a day's worth of D, and then you get through like a couple of sessions and you're like that's it done and then i guess getting people excited to play with each other i think that's the, yeah. the goal of this particular stuff so i don't mind it as a result again it's been ages and ages since i played uh lost minds of fan delver myself mm-hmm. but th- that feels like a first mini campaign or first campaign even not yes. even mini campaign but first campaign that you know, you 10 years later, look back at it and think, oh, the adventures I had. Yeah, yeah. This feels like, oh, yeah, this was a, oh, yeah, that was that fun game that I, we played before we got into our own thing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Does that make it a better starter set? Possibly. Possibly, yeah. Each their own, isn't it? It's like, yeah, pros and cons of both of them. Well, there you go. Well, thank you so much, Ty, for like joining me on my starter sets, like quest to like complete them all. <laughs> I very much appreciate it. Uh, let the listeners know where can we find you, what projects have you got coming up, and uh, yeah, w- where can we find you on social media? Yes. Uh, so first of all, um, look for me at sidecharacterquest.com. Uh, it's a website that we set up last year. It's got tons of really good art from our show and it also links to our social media Mm -hmm. right now we're still on twitter for whatever reason i don't know know. um but uh seq podcast on twitter or for myself win lose tie that's ty and as for projects that i'm uh working on right now in i don't remember the exact date of it but in august Mm -hmm. i'm gonna start airing episode 101 (gasps) to 108 an eight episode quest um (gasps) on side character quest starring joshua lormer who listeners may know from sneak attack from titans of altera a couple of like early and awesome old show uh old actual play shows Mm -hmm. it's a really really good it's a uh, i don't like to hype myself up it's really really good good. (laughs) it's a very great quest that Mm -hmm. he came on like i said eight episodes i designed it from the ground up (sighs) to be rewarding for people that have been longtime listeners Mm -hmm. but also to be a wonderful introduction to the show for new people and if you bail it stands alone. It, nice. it can be, but there's all these little tidbits that'll be like, ah. Ooh, maybe I want to go check out those old, old episodes. So yeah. Side character quest on all of your podcast things. 
go to sidecharacterquest.com to see mm-hmm. like the cool art listen to a trailer i was just, just looking at my pile because yeah i have a little bit of the the art you sent me a postcard of uh oh yeah yeah i've got kept Cause, it because i was gonna put it on my wall and stuff so your sister does the art doesn't yes, she? So, my, uh, my sister does the art um she did you're holding up a postcard of a uh of a beautiful bird um artwork that she did in watercolor gorgeous the art on the um website is inspired by uh charlie harper who is an mm. older um sort of a flat very graphic um art designer and she did an amazing job mm-hmm. sort of pulling from that inspiration and bringing all of the characters in the world to life it, it's it's so beautiful it's so gorgeous yeah please check it out yeah please check it out so for the last um year or so uh, starting in spring of 2023 mm-hmm. i went to a uh, local game shop in the area that I used to live. I used to live in Philadelphia. Mm-hmm. I went to Philadelphia Game Shop. And the experience of doing just a drop-in game, a drop-in mm-hmm. campaign with strangers that I'd never met before, it was very low pressure. You just just pop mm-hmm. in, say hi, make your character, have a good time. Yeah, I stuck around for a whole year. It was a wonderful experience. Basically, what I'm saying is, if you haven't gone to play a TTRPG in a while... Mm-hmm look up what is available in your area go check it out join join like a drop in um uh like a ttrp ttrpg book club i have actually seen multiple mm. in various cities they are around just get it put yourself out there and have a wonderful time play games <laughs> play games absolutely yeah no i agree I, I agree like yeah if you're worried about like oh your friend your friends aren't free or available to play absolutely mm-hmm. go into a game store and if they have a regular ttrpg night or i know i'm i know in the uk we have stuff like meetup i'm sure there's similar things yes. in the us yes. where you could do the same thing uh, so yeah to check those out well brilliant um you probably can't hear this type but there's a massive thunderstorm happening outside um, i was wondering what that sound was i could hear occasional <laughs> crashes and i yeah I it literally that... just yeah. just come over so i, I, best, I better just Better just end the call now in case I get swept away <laughs> by the rain. But thank you so much, listeners, for listening to uh, this week's uh, Dean Book Club. Ty, thank you so much. We'll bring you back on absolutely uh, yes. ASAP to talk more about uh, maybe other things other than D&D or maybe D&D adjacent. Uh, to yes. get there. And yeah, I can't wait to... Well, congrats on the the, the new launch of uh, Side yeah. Quest. I'm very excited for you. And yeah, you, absolutely, you've got to be your own hype person because no one else is going to be. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank totally. you so much. Thank you. This world is a peaceful one. Plains, mountains, swamps, pines, cicadas sing, rivers flow, magic thrums through the air, and all of it's surrounded by a single massive wall, as ancient as history itself. So, you know, not that ancient. Thanks to the loss, prehistoric ain't all that long ago. Oh well, life is good, and assuming you don't mind the looming threat of a mysterious skeletal society. Side character quest. A D&D adventure, one player at a time. Some worlds need a hero. This one? Eh, might need a bit more than that.